Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we have got a CLK 55 AMG 209 chassis, which is quite a rare car. This car has been sent to us from Birmingham. Um, there's a bit of a story with this car. The car has been off the road for about seven years, apparently. The customer wants us to get it back on the road. It's been stood for a very long time and it has done 36,000 miles. 36,000 miles from brand new. So we've got a bit of a task on our hands because our car stood for this long is never a good thing. You come across all sorts of strange things. We got it off the recovery wagon a few days ago and the battery was flat. We left it on charge overnight and it wouldn't hold the charge. So we had to fit a new battery before we could do any work at all. We fitted a new battery and we will see if it starts. I'll just wait for that plane to Right, well, you are going to see if it starts. I have a feeling it's not because when I turn the ignition on, I cannot hear a fuel pump priming. So, no, it doesn't start. I'll we'll have to push it in the garage. Okay, we need to uh, check the fuse for the fuel pump first things first. I can't remember what fuse is the fuse for the fuel pump, however I've just tested all the fuses. Fuse 8 is blown, I have a feeling that's for central locking, I can't remember uh, which central locking is not working. And fuse 11 is blown as well, so we we'll change them, see if we get any difference. Can I have two seven and a half amp fuses? <laughs> right, we've checked we've tested the the fuse for the fuel pump and it's good. We've tested the relay, it's good. So now we've got to gain access to the pump itself to see if we're getting power here. If we're getting power here we've got a fuel pump problem. Good news. The blown fuse was for the central locking. Central locking now works. So first thing we're going to do, unplug the plug and inspect it for any corrosion, which there is none. Right, we have tested the feeds. We've got our earth and we have got a priming signal. If you turn the ignition on, Reese. So that should prime the pump and then when it's cranking it comes back if you crank these off but obviously the pump is not kicking in so that identifies that we've got something wrong with the pump from memory it's a dual pump system could be wrong so we need to take the fuel pump out see what's going on We've figured out that we need a fuel pump for the car. We've took the fuel pump out of the car and tested these two pumps. We've tested them individually and neither of them are working. So I've priced up a new fuel pump with Mercedes, which is £1,200 plus VAT. So we have an idea, a money saving idea for the customer because I have done this before. What's 1,200 plus that? About one, one and a half grand. So, we've took the two individual pumps out of the sender unit, which we've took to pieces, and the plan is to replace these individually. So this little pump is out of a Mark II Golf GTI. That's about 100 quid. Peerberg is the brand. And this one is out of a 2003 530i BMW. That's again about 100 quid. I'm not sure on the brand on this one because uh, it's not got a stamp on it, but I've ordered a Magnet Morelli. I've ordered the best brand I can basically. Looking at saving the customer about, well, just over a thousand pound. Here you can see where we've taken it to pieces. 
we're going to remove the pumps, refit them all, rebuild it all back together, put it back in the car, and then hopefully it'll start. Right, we've got the fuel pump rebuilt, shall we call it. Just going to demonstrate one, one of the old pumps, um, how we tested it to confirm that the pump is faulty. Obviously, you saw us test it in the car. Just going to put a live on a nerve to the terminals, probe it, and you can hear it, hear it a little bit struggling. Nothing. It spanned for a second but then stopped, so that confirms that. We've explained where we got these pumps from. I will leave part numbers for them both in the description because you cannot buy them separate from Mercs. Mercedes have designed this so they're not supposed to be um, replaced and it's the full unit, but we have managed to do it. Um, there was like one time use clips and the plastic pipes had one time use clamps on them both so they were a struggle to get off without damaging because if we damage them we can't replace them so fingers crossed these two pumps are good and this will get the car running so the fuel pump is back in there was loads of black rubber bits off this seal in the bottom of the tank so we've had to suck all that out because last thing we want is that getting sucked into our new fuel pump uh, so we've got a seal on order so for the time being we've just temporarily fitted it um, without just to see if it starts fingers crossed because even though we know that we had no fuel pumps um, doesn't mean it's going to start could have another problem now I'm stood in after that, my back's killing. Keys. So first thing, we should be able to hear the fuel pump priming. I'll stick my mic back there, see if we can. Ignition on. Yeah. So we didn't have that before, so we'll give it a couple of primes to get the fuel up to the engine. What are you, what are you betting? Start? Yeah. Reese? Yeah, let's see. It's been off the road for six or seven years this yeah man. yeah <laughs> hey it's a good start i didn't think it was gonna go then to be fair oh, i'm quite pleased with that <laughs> see that massive smile for everyone massive smile for the audience <laughs> Uh, we'll let it idle for a bit, don't want to rev it or anything yet, it's been uh, sat around for a long, long time, so we'll let it idle, monitor temperatures, just monitor coolant and stuff like that, brake wear, visit workshop, light is on the dash, uh, but customer has supplied discs and pads all around. So you what, that is running absolutely sweet. Because it has been stuck for that long. Sweet. The good old M113. Right, we're obviously not going to go down the road in it because uh, it's not MOT, we don't know if it's safe. But what we are going to do is just have a little drive around the yard, see if it moves. And yep, it's gone straight in gear and moves. Oh yeah, we're moving. This like literally feels like brand new. 36,000 miles CLK 55 AMG. Oh, she definitely moves. See if parking sensors work. Have we got a foot brake? Yep. So far, so good. 
So we've got the car running, we've now got it on the ramp, we've given it a small inspection to see what we need to do to get it through an MLT basically. First things first, we need to replace discs and pads all around. One, the front's uh, worn out and bringing the light on the dash. Two, they're really old. So the customer's supplied his own and we're happy to fit them for him. Upon removal of the rear pads, it's a good job he is because they've fallen to pieces. So that was a good idea. Rear discs and pads are done. We're now going to move on to the fronts. When we've done a small inspection of the car, we have found that the front aluminium arm bushes have completely separated. So we do need to replace them. That will not pass an MOT. Uh, we've inspected the rear and front brake hoses. The rear brake hoses have got a little bit of cracking in them. So we want to replace all them. And obviously we've got to flush out all the old brake fluid because this car's been sat around for a long time. So we want the brakes to be tip top. But other than that, so far so good. We've not found anything too scary. Uh, so we'll keep, keep going, see what else we find. So we've got the caliper off, disc off. As you can see, the hub is quite rusty so we need to clean the surface off on the hub to ensure the disc flip fits flush as you can see on the front brake pad that's the wear sensor and you can see where it's gone through there which is why the lights on the dash they spent quite a bit of time cleaning up all the hubs to get it as smooth as possible to avoid any brake judder there's the end result. And then we can start reassembling the front brakes with the new discs, or if you're American, rotors. Because the car's been stood for so long, uh, we need to adjust the wheel bearings. Not many people know they're adjustable, but they are. So to prolong the life of the bearing, I'm gonna take that outer bearing out, repack the bearing and put it back in because we can and why not because we're while we're in there so we could have just nipped them up and called it a day but we're, we're just going to repack this outer bearing obviously we're not repacking the inner bearing but it's better than nothing so you can see the outer bearings out so we're going to repack it get some fresh grease in there just give it a little bit of a refresh with it being sat for so long so we've just packed a bit of grease in there and we're going to nip it up and then once it's nipped up because we've had it off and back on you would always check for any free play again after a road test once the bearing's settled in but i think we're a long way off that yet but right we're moving on to the brake hoses i've done three already we're changing all four because of the age of them and the rears are cracking. So I spoke to the customer, he said change the lot, which personally I think is a good idea. So we'll show you changing one of them. So the old hose is off, just got to show you where it's all starting to crack, don't know if you can see that or not. Obviously all the um, fixing is all rotten as well, plus the rubber's gone really hard, it doesn't bend much whereas your new one, nice and flexible, hence why it's called a flexi pipe. Right, next what we're going to do is we're going to clean it all off, just going to let it dry 
Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to take out the bleed screw nipple. I'm going to give that a clean up because that's been in there a long time as well. Make sure we get a nice clean bleed. So nipples all cleaned up. Screw that back in, so that's gonna make it nice and easy to bleed now. Give the rubber boot a clean, and then that is that side done. Obviously, that's the last one as well. And then what we also do is to give the New parts, a little bit of protection. You can see the brake pipes in really good condition as well. Uh, I'm just gonna put some of this on it. to give it a little coating to try and stop it rusting again like that. That's it, so that's done. So all you've got to do now is bleed the whole system. So we're bleeding the brakes, two bar pressure using the AT brake bleeder. We're on the last corner to do. So it's all bleeding nice and easy because of the preparation we've done. So we're bleeding up all our new lines. As I explained before, you can see the protection spray we've put on the brake pipe and hose. We are also going to replace the alarm siren. Uh, if you remember at the beginning of the video, we found the fuse had blown for the central lock-in, which is also the same feed as the siren. It's actually the siren itself that fails and short circuits and blows the fuse. Um, they've actually modified the siren, as you can see the difference already. What would you say? An audible... Audio? An audible beep. Audible. Audible. Don't want... Jeff having me on, do I? <laughs> Great grammar. With the new siren, you get an audible beep. So when you lock the car, um, it will acknowledge that you've locked it and unlocked it. Whereas with the old siren, you didn't get that. So we'll get that unbolted, get that swap round, and then that's another job done. So as you can see, we've got the siren out. And you can see the difference. So the alarm's fitted, so like I said, with the later style alarm, you get an acknowledgement that the car's locked and unlocked. And with the old siren, you didn't get that, so that's another job done. Nathan's done the fuel filter at the back of the car. Uh, obviously, a new fuel filter to go with the new fuel pumps, um, and you would always replace that anyway. It looks like, to be honest, it's the original one. That left the factory, it doesn't look in good state at all. We're now gonna move on to the alley arm bushes. To get the suspension arms out, we've gotta drop the roll bar down and we've gotta drop the hub off to get it out. Now, these bolts that attach the roll bar to the subframe are really common for snapping. And that's the last thing that we want to happen because that would be massive, massive pain. I'm going to take our time getting them out and uh, show you some techniques we used to do it. So I can tell you now, they feel tight. Yeah. Don't want to snap them, do we? Air hammer. So first thing we're going to do is we've got a air hammer with a socket attachment and we're just gonna give the bolt an impact to try and free off all the rust. That's the first attempt. Right, so now we've given the bolt a bit of a shock. Good job, aren't it? <laughs> Literally. We'll see if we can undo it. Right, so you just put your hand in the top there, put your finger on top of the bolt, and see if you can feel it move. 
Yeah, it is, yeah. Moving. Yeah. Well, hey. So that's one. Three to go. So basically, if, it, if Reese can't feel it spinning, sorry, turning as I'm unturning, it, it's twisting. I tell you what, that's a good tool, that, isn't it? Yeah. That was tight, that before. That's just done done with one hand. Smashed it. Every Mercedes mechanic will know that that is not easy to do. So, top tip for anyone watching, blast it with your snap-on air hammer with socket attachment. Just vibrates that bolt, get it out. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> right, so really pleased they came out nice and, I don't want to say nice and easy, because it wasn't. Well, they came out nice. So we will just, we've just took the, dropped the roll bar down and it's got um, separate, anti-roll bar bushes which go around there and then the clamp fits on so which is unusual a lot of these roll bars had a fixed roll bar bush she had to replace the full bar this has got ones that you can replace separate so while we're in there we will change them no extra cost to the customer pretty inexpensive part and um well we've got to take it off anyway haven't we Now we've got to unbolt the hub here and here, and there's a pinch bolt up there. Replace that, then we can tilt the hub down, take the arm out, put it back in, and bolt it back up. I see what I'm filming struggling. Oh, Jimmy, I'll go quick then. One out, one in. Oh. New arm in loose, we are using Lemforder arms, which is the same as Mercedes use. We'll take you over to the vise. We'll show you how worn this bush is. Aggressive then. Michael, what? Aggressive. Listen, you gotta get angry with these bolts sometimes. Yep. Got the new roll bar bushes that we said we we're gonna fit as a while you're in there. Um, they've come, we can see that they're going to be a lot tighter than the old ones. So we're going to fit them as part of doing that. These two of these was 15 quid, so well worth doing. So we'll get them on the roll bar, get them done and that's it. Right, customer has supplied a gearbox service kit, a Marley kit, which is a very good brand. So we've got gasket, a gearbox plug, good man, new bolts, sump plug, magnet, 
washers, filter, five litres of fluid. Right, be interesting to see what colour this fluid is. 36,000 miles, been off the road seven years. Mm. Brown, it's not black, but... It's just rust. So we'll get that cleaned out. We're going to do a valve body and cooler line slash torque converter flush on this. Basically, we've got a piece of equipment that we attach to the valve body. It pushes low pressure, and I mean extremely low pressure, around the system and keeps pumping all the remaining fluid out of the gearbox. So we'll show you that procedure as well. Yeah, the bottom of the filter is all rusty. I am hoping that this gearbox is okay because um, that's not really a very good sign that it's to the side, stuck to the side of the, this is the valve body. These plates that hold the springs in, they're all rusty as well. So we, c we cannot tell what the condition of the inside of this gearbox is like. Um, we can only go off what we can see. So I'm hoping that this gearbox is actually okay, but uh, uh, until we drive it down the road, we just don't know and I, I can't drive it like that. And obviously we need an MLT. Not the greatest news that, to be honest. I mean, look at that now. Just shows you underuse is just as bad as overuse because these things are sat not doing nothing. Right, so we've set up the tool and basically connect it to the airline. We've got a regulator, super low pressure. You don't want to go wild with this thing. And it's got to push air all around the gearbox and just keep circulating. And in turn, it's got to push it out of the valve body. So basically, I'm just going to leave that on now, leave it to do its job, go and have a brew, come back, just keep an eye on it. And we want to get as much fluid out as possible with that. Um, so like I say, that is just circulating around the whole system and obviously because we've got no sump pan on, pushing it straight out. Right, the drain's done. We've just span the engine over with the inspection cover off for the torque converter to make sure it hasn't got a torque converter drain, which it hasn't. So before anyone comments us, why have you not drained the torque converter? Because this one hasn't even got a drain. Not all Mercedes had a torque converter drain. That's why we've done that instead. But we've checked anyway because of the condition of this fluid and how bad it was. So let's move on. Now. There's a tiny little seven mil nut that holds this gearbox plug in place. They can snap. I have had one snap on me before. Then you've got to take the valve body out and replace the conductor plate, which I don't want to do. So I've got to be very careful. And if I think it's going to snap, I won't be taking it out. Oh, there we go. One seal, so there must be another one stuck inside. I hope this new one fits good actually because I have had difficulties fitting um, new ones before, especially non-genuine, even genuine ones I've struggled to fit before. You've got to make sure you get your pins lined up perfectly because, oh that went straight in, straight in, little tiny nip, 7 mil, click in. Job done. So, new sump gasket. Visa's done a good job of cleaning out the sump. New magnet. We've got the later style, stronger magnet rather than the grill type. Uh, new filter on. New bolts in the brackets. It's a pretty good kit, this, that's been supplied, so I'm quite happy. T30, gentlemen. I'm obviously not... There's a torch there. Too happy with 
the condition of the fluid that's come out on this, but we're going to have to finish the gearbox service and see what it drives like. Obviously, we've not drove the car. Mercedes specification 236.14. Something else to note is the gearbox dipstick tube is right next to the engine dipstick tube. It's very easy to fill it up down the wrong tube. If you can see the color of that. Let's start her up. Didn't start up the best that, did it? We got drive. The gearbox service is done, suspension arms are done, anti-roll bar bushes are done. I think what we need to do now is get it through an MOT and get some miles on it to make sure we're happy with this gearbox because I wasn't expecting to find that, to be honest. Rather than get right involved in a major service, I think we should get it through an MOT get it passed, get some miles on it, and then all being well, then we can continue with the service work. We're in regular communication with the customer, he's a really nice fella. He's actually a YouTube viewer, that's how he's come to contact us and get this booked in with us. Let's get it in for an MLT, let's see how we go. Right everybody, a couple of days later, good news, we have an MLT. So, first road test the MOT station is on the next street so that doesn't really count so I've got my trade plates in and let's see how she drives before we get on with anything else so I'm just blocked in the industrial estate at the minute so quick update on the clip before this, roughly, um, when we finished the gearbox service, it didn't start up the best. It started, but the cranking was really long. Um, it has persisted to do that. The reserve fuel light was on, so I thought it would be that. And obviously the saddle tank's not full of fuel since we did the fuel pump. I've put half a tank in it, just under half a tank, and it's exactly the same. So, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to take out the fuel pumps again and just make sure I've not done something wrong. So I'm not too happy about that. So I'm gonna to have to take it all back out, unfortunately, and just double check everything. Right, we've finally been let out and we are driving. Actually feels really good this, so far so good. I've literally got to the end of the road, so I shouldn't say that yet. I can tell you now, one of those fuel pumps is a little bit too noisy for my liking. I don't know if you can hear it on the microphone, but it's definitely a little bit too loud. And I'm definitely glad to take those pumps back out and uh, have a look into that. Not gonna go anywhere crazy, just local roads. Last thing I wanna do is break down on a main road. Nice gear change. This car needs a little bit of bodywork, um, which the customer's got to get done. This is going to be a lovely car, this, when it's done. Especially with this mileage, it just needs using. These cars do need to be used. Underuse is as bad as overuse. I've just put the cruise control on going up a reasonable hill, and there was no slipping, no uh, judder from the torque converter or anything like that, so that's good news. I feel quite privileged that I'm the first person to drive this car after seven years. Steering feels good. Even the steering wheel, it's just like brand new. Obviously, regular viewers will know that I have one of these cars. If you're looking to buy your first AMG and you're on a budget, I'd honestly look no further. You can pick these up for about seven grand. You, you've got the pick of the bunch. Granted, they're old, they all need a little bit of work, but I say they're an old car, to me they're not an old car, but 
I'm actually away for a couple of weeks so there's not going to be an update on this for a while. I am going to leave the lads a list of service jobs to do on it while I'm away. They will try and get a bit of footage um, but it's not going to be like massively in depth but it's nothing you've not seen before. Matt from High Peaks ML500 video, it's going to be very similar to that. All the work we're doing, we're going to do obviously major service, spark plugs, we've already done the gearbox, diff oil, uh, customers give us a new fan belt so it's going to be very similar. So I think when I get back from my trip we'll do another video with what's been done, hopefully they get some footage for us and then we'll do a part two. Really I wanted to put it all in one video but it's getting on a bit so just done two miles making our way back to the garage and it drives really well. The owner of the car came down to meet us the other day, first time I've met him, um, it's all been on the telephone and email. Really nice guy, he's quite a big enthusiast in the in Mercs in general, but he has a bit of a soft spot for the CLKs, which I do as well. I'm a bit jealous. He's got a really good one here. Well, it is now that we've got our hands on it anyway, but the point is, it's such a low mileage example. There can't be many in the country like this, because it's a, it's a rare car to begin with. It's a 30 mile an hour going past the school, and I've got someone right up. Well, I think that concludes part one to this car. I think we've done quite well considering the, the background of the vehicle. Don't forget to like and subscribe, give us a thumbs up, give us a comment, and keep an eye out for the next one. Cheers.